Hi everybody and welcome to my first of three videos about the Nikon F. This is the F. This is the camera that started the Nikon Professional Series 35mm system camera lineage. And we're going to do three videos. First two are going to be our standard videos looking at the camera's features and we're talk going to talk about how to use them. And we're doing a third video just for the photomic light meter prism that is on this camera because it is one of many prisms and it has its own set of quirks and requirements. So this was, remains, an interchangeable lens SLR and what that means is that the lens can be taken off and put back on. It has a 60-40 center weighted meter with the prism that is attached to it right now. The camera itself has no built-in light meter. Its shutter speeds include time, bulb, and one second to one one thousandth of a second. The viewfinder magnification is dependent upon the viewfinder mounted on the camera. Viewfinder frame coverage is 100% on every prism, which is a pretty impressive feat. It has interchangeable focusing screens, at least five different ones. And in the uh, second video, we will look at how to change focusing screens on this camera, because I've done it. And it has uh, X, M, F, and FP flash syncs with uh, X flash sync at 1 60th of a second. M, F, and FP are different types of bulb flashes that you can't get anymore. So for this, the only thing you really need to worry about is the 1 60th of a second X flash sync speed. So the Nikon F was, as I said, the first modular system camera introduced by Nikon. In fact, it was the first modular system camera of its kind. It represented a paradigm shift in Nikon's approach to photography and camera makers in general. It is a very high-end and expandable system designed for durability and extended use. In fact, many can still work and most of those could still be recovered. I bought this one for $18 and uh, it, didn't, it didn't work. Not perfectly. I mean, the shutter speed worked, and but the meter didn't couple with the the, uh, the 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 camera lens properly, and it had a, some slowness in it. wasn't quite perfect, so I managed to get it fixed, and now it works on spec. And uh, it it didn't take very long. I had it back in, in ten days. They so they're very durable and reliable cameras. Nikon produced the F from 1959 until 1973 with 862,600 bodies being produced. That's a lot for any camera. And it was produced exclusively in Japan. It was followed by the Nikon F2. Uh, it was evolved from the Nikon SP but it was the first Nikon SLR. In fact, the SP was not an SLR. This, not only was this Nikon's first system SLR, it was their first SLR. And it was concurrent with the Nikorex Nikomat F and Nikomat EL. So we're going to start with the strap lugs, which technically are on the side, but those are where you connect your camera strap. Then we have the film rewind knob and film rewind lever, which just pops right out there. And those are mounted in Nikon's proprietary flash coupling system. Never a good idea to have a proprietary flash coupler like that. Serial number. This is the viewfinder prism mounting window. And you can see the interchangeable focusing screen below it. Here we have the shutter speed dial the flash type indicator. And when you have the, the, the light metering prism on, you can't even see that, but that tells you what type of flash you're set to use. And on most cameras that you've probably seen, you lift up 
this ring to set the ISO. However, on the Nikon F, you lift up this ring to set the flash type. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that means in the second video, but the TLDR version is leave it on FX and forget about it. The colors on the shutter speed selector also correspond with the flash type. This is actually non-standard equipment. That's a soft release. We'll get that out of here. Here we have A and R. That is your lock and unlock. Or I'm sorry, that is your advance and rewind rather. So in A, you can advance the film. To rewind it, you switch it to R and you're ready to go. Believe me, the first time I used this, I didn't know about that. And I was looking in the bottom of the camera, where, where's the rewind button? It took me, I wanna say something like seven minutes longer than I really care to admit to figure out how to rewind the button. In fact, I had to go out and look it up online. Uh, the rewind button was just hidden. In the rewind and advance selector, you have the shutter, the shutter actuator and you push this button to hit your shutter and you can see there's a red dot in it that rotates as you advance your film. This is the film advance lever so after you take a picture you advance that. We've got your memo to let you know whether you have 36 or 20. Those were the standard film sizes back in the day. Now it's 36 and 24. Plus your frame count window right there. So those are technically, this, your, your, this is your frame counter and cassette capacity memo window. This is the depth of field preview button that you push to see what the depth of field will be approximately as you take the picture. This is the mirror lockup knob that you rotate to lock up the mirror. Below the depth of field preview button, we have the mirror lockup knob and it, it functions a little bit oddly, but to lock up the mirror, it, you have to sacrifice a frame to lock it up. Here's the lens mount and the lens release. You can see the little pin going into the camera body as I push that. And over here is your flash PC port, which is useful if, like me, when you bought the camera, you forgot to take the adapter for the flash hot shoe. Yeah, it's embarrassing. The camera's back doesn't have a whole lot to see because we don't have the prism mounted on it. This button right here is the button you push to release the prism. And at least on this one, you really gotta, gotta push it. In fact, maybe it's just because my fingers don't really fit in that hole very well. Um, but sometimes I have to use a pencil eraser or something like that to push on it. On the camera's bottom, we have the open and close lock right here, tripod bushing and your film memo dial. For the life of me, I have no idea why that's got a red and a black index on it. At any rate, this is what you use if you don't have, if you have a prism that does not have an ISO setting on it, this is what you would use to remind yourself whether you're using ISO 400, 200, or whatever it is. As you can see, the memo dial doesn't go up very high, but it does go really, really low because back when this camera came out, High-speed films like 400, 600, 800, 3200, which you can get from, from both Ilford and Kodak, uh, weren't really invented yet, at least, and they, they weren't very good if they were. Uh, films ha were much, much slower back then. To open the camera, you lift up this little lever, rotate it to open, and then magic happens there we go the whole camera back comes off so this is inside the camera here's the film cassette chamber these four silver rails are the film guide rails and the top and the outside to keep the film from moving up and down and the inside to work with the film pressure plate to keep the film flat on plane here we have the shutter curtain which is what opens and closes when you take the picture This is the film tension sprocket that keeps tension on the film. It keeps it from pulling back into the cassette and it also helps keep the film flat on plane. This is the film take up spool. And on the back, it's pretty rudimentary. All we have is the pressure plate. We don't have any of the normal rolls and springs and things like that that more recent professional grade cameras have. 
and just shows that the this was still a pretty early professional grade camera in fact uh, oh geez in fact the removable backs fell out of vogue shortly after this was made and one of the reasons is because it's very easy to drop and bend a removable back or drop it and very nearly puncture your shutter curtain like I almost just did with it <coughs> but the removable backs do have a nice feature in that not Nikon but another manufacturer made removable removable backs it had dark slides in them so if you wanted to switch from black and white to slide film or color film or different speeds of film you just had to carry three different removable backs with you or two or nine or however many and one camera body and then just sl swap the backs in and out to take different pictures kind of neat very useful for prof professionals uh, and nerds So a couple notes about this camera. This was, as I said, Nikon's first SLR. It was also the first professional SLR, the first system SLR. You might think that F would stand for first, but F does not. Nikon selected F to coincide with the F in reflex, which is the type of mirror that it has, reflex. And that's, so that's the origin of, of the uh, F designation. A few don'ts things not to do with your camera. Don't put your finger in the shutter. And in fact, don't touch your shutter. That's a good way to brick a perfectly good camera. Uh, don't touch the mirror inside of the shutter body. It's surface coated and your oil, your finger oils will ruin the mirror and make your camera uh, function poorly. Don't leave your camera or lenses in your car because in the summer it'll get really hot and the oils will get places they can't and ruin the mechanism or slow down the mechanisms. It'll have to be cleaned and repaired. Also, don't let it get really cold because uh, cold stress can cause other interesting problems, uh, such as causing your, the oils in the, in the operating mechanisms to degrade and break down. Also get into places where they're not supposed to when they thaw. Don't store your camera in a plastic bag or box because water or moisture will make its way into that box and fungus loves to grow on these things and ruin them. And don't let your camera get wet. The Nikon F is a professional camera, but it is not a weather sealed professional camera. That didn't come along until much later. And so even though it's very capable and reliable, if moisture gets into it, it could ruin the internal components. And that would be hard, if not impossible, to repair anymore. Just remember that your camera is a precision tool and should be handled with care and respect. And as long as you take care of your camera, your camera will take care of you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below. If this video was helpful to you, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know I'm on the right track and that I'm producing content which is useful. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. And if I have the technical know-how, and the equipment, I'm more than happy to make those videos for you. If you'd like to subscribe, that would be great. That way you'll know whenever I have more videos coming out. And one last thing before photos, thank you guys for watching. What could even be said about the Nikon F? It was the first system SLR, and the first bayonet mount SLR, and the first professional grade SLR. Among SLRs, this is the first in the list of cameras with the most numbers of things for which it was first in. And like each of the F cameras, which trace their lineage back to this camera, this was an SLR of which people dreamt about owning. Yes, absolutely, it's huge and heavy and not as capable as today's cameras. But yes, it is. In fact, it's more capable than many modern cameras. And that's the beauty of old cameras like the Nikon F. It works with you as a partner, a contributor to your craft. It is as though these cameras have souls and wills and they want nothing more than to help their owner take the best photos possible. It lacks all the digital displays and extraneous lights and screens that distract people from taking photos. This camera seeks submission and, unlike modern cameras, the Nikon F recognizes that photography is about the art, not the camera. By contrast, 
Your modern camera thinks you are a decerebrate moron. Your modern camera wants to do everything for you, strip you of creative control, and simply hand over the images it wants to take. And reigning in a modern camera takes a lot more learning than was required to become an old camera's partner. Do I love the Nikon F? I certainly love what it represents. A time when cameras were engineered to help people develop a creative and interpretive photographic voice. A time that modern camera makers have forgotten is what made photography a special and wonderful art form.